Chapter 41 No one will marry you when you are expressionless and vicious in the tongue. Cabinet? Fang Chi glanced over at the cabinets on the wall, which looked like display cases. As expected, a black, heavy-looking rocket launcher appeared in it. The body of this black rocket launcher was about half a person tall when it was vertically displayed, and it took the shape of a giant gun. However, it wasn't an ordinary rocket launcher with an over-the-shoulder barrel, it was more portable. Isn't this the rocket launcher that players get when they pass the Resident Evil 1 remake within three hours? Fang Chi felt speechless, you can recreate a weapon like this. Although this rocket launcher was more portable than the one thrown down from the helicopter in the game, it could kill the tyrant just as easily. Fang Chi threw the rocket launcher over his shoulder, opened the door to his shop and left. The rain was coming down harder than ever. Miss Nalan. A shriek resonated across the night sky. Lan Yan looked at Nalan Minx so helplessly as her face lit up with shock and horror. The latter had fallen onto the ground, and her face had become as pale as a ghost. Don't you find it weird? Why isn't the person who is secretly protecting you here? The leader of the assassins smiled coldly and said, I guess you won't see him again. Nalan Minx whose expression was icy, this was probably the greatest danger she had ever come across her entire life. Even though life in the Nalan family felt like treading on thin ice, she had never been forced into a corner as tight as this one. Should I say that you are confident or stupid? Upon realizing that Nalan Minx who no longer posed a threat to him, the assassin in black finally took off the bamboo hat on his head, showing his thin face and hook nose. Your whereabouts have never been fixed. You always conduct a thorough investigation of wherever you go, and my young master never even got a chance to kill you, no matter how hard he tried. The young master asked me to thank the owner of that shop. Thanks to him, we found a loophole in your habits, my diligent little lady. Impressive. This assassin's expression became murderous as he slowly raised the dagger in his hand. Too bad you'll never have the chance to hear me thanking him. Nalan Minxu slowly closed her eyes, she blamed herself for being so reckless during a dangerous time like this. She sighed as she was now on the edge of a cliff. No matter how smart and calm she was, she couldn't find a way to save herself. How ironic, she thought. The tip of the dagger, mixed in with the fierce wind, came slamming down on her like a streak of white light, and it was so bright that she was almost blinded. She could feel a blast of icy energy approaching her. Perhaps in the next second, she would be torn up by that energy. However, in the next second, she heard a crisp metal collision sound. Tink. The iciness suddenly disappeared. She opened her eyes and saw a thick, black barrel steadily blocking that shiny dagger. Someone saved her from the hands of death while her life was hanging by a thread. She had no idea who would save her at a time like this. No one, not even the city guards, would come to the secluded and quiet civilian district at a time like this, especially in this rain. Who could it be? Mr. Fang. Chi? Flabbergasted. Lan Yan looked at the man who stopped the dagger in amazement. How could it be? Why would Fang Chi come here at a time like this? She didn't understand why he would come, but he was standing before them. Who is it? Nalan Ji froze and squinted at the man who stopped him from killing Nalan Ming Su. Did I not hear him because of the sound of the rain? Nalan Ji looked closely at the person who stopped his dagger, he seemed like a young man who wasn't even a master warrior yet. Perhaps he was outstanding compared to the other young men of his age, but he was no more than an ant in front of an ancestral warrior like him. Just now, Nalan Ji didn't use much strength since he was trying to kill a woman who didn't even have the strength left in her to resist. Fang Chi? Lan Yan looked at Fang Chi as if he was their last chance at survival. She grabbed his arm and cried helplessly, Mr. Fang, please save Miss Nalan. She regretted not stopping Nalan Ming Su from going to Fang Chi's shop. Now, they had completely fallen into their enemy's trap. Even Nalan Ming Su's last hidden cards had been uncovered. She really didn't know how they could escape from this calamity. Lan Yan wasn't that talented so she felt like her death wouldn't make too much of a difference. However, a person as talented as Nalan Minx who shouldn't die here so powerlessly. Isn't that what I'm here for? With a smile, Fang Chi looked at Nalan Jin said, let's talk about this. Can you pick another time to murder someone? Fang Chi then pointed at Nalan Minx who and said in all seriousness, 
if words got out that someone died because she played too late at my shop, I'm going to be humiliated, aren't I, oh? Nalanji froze for a second before quickly realizing what was happening. Then, he laughed arrogantly, so, you're the owner of that little shop, yup. Fang Chi nodded with no expression on his face. I thought you were going to thank me, can you do me this favor? Do you a favor? Nalanji's face twisted as if he had just heard the funniest joke in the world. Who do you think you are? How dare you ask me for a favor? The way you went back on your words so easily sure is annoying. Fang Chi shrugged and said casually, but since my shop operates until this hour, I have to ensure the safety of my customers. Nalan Ming Su sighed quietly, she never thought that Fang Chi would be the one to come to her rescue. Although she knew Fang Chi's powers, he was faced against an ancestral warrior. No matter how strong he was, he was still a 16-year-old kid. Was he capable of defeating Grandmaster Warriors and Ancestral Warriors? Thank you. But you're not Chris from Resident Evil, nor are you the main characters in Diablo. Please don't overestimate yourself. If you don't act rationally, you're going to die with me. She sat on the ground weakly and said in calmness, Miss Expressionless, no one will marry you if you keep up that vicious tongue of yours, Fang Chi said in all earnestness. Although this is my first time engaging in real life combat, can you have some faith in me? M. Miss Expressionless. Lan Yan's giant eyes blinked as she thought, did he just say that this is his first time engaging in real life combat? If that is the case, who would have faith in you? Lan Yan felt like crying. Nalan Ming Su froze as well. Did he just call me Miss Expressionless? Fang Chi removed the rocket launcher from his back and waved his hand at Lan Yan, gesturing her to retreat with Nalan Ming Su and kill him. With Nalan Ji's command, the eight assassins charged at Fang Chi all at once. These eight assassins were of the same team and had been through strict training. Therefore, they were extremely well organized. Fang Chi pulled his trigger. Swoop. A rocket dashed out the barrel letting out a long flame tail. What in the world is that? The assassin in the middle saw the flames and quickly protected himself with his sword. Boom. A violent explosion shook the entire road they were on. Out of the eight powerful Grandmaster Warriors, four of them were instantly engulfed by the flames. Nothing is impossible with the blast of my rocket launcher. Fang Chi smiled as he aimed, pulled the trigger, and shot out another rocket. If there is, I'll just shoot another rocket, swoop. The remaining assassins who had been injured by the previous blast were immediately blown away. At that very second, Lan Yan's brain went blank while Nalan Ming Su froze. Our rocket launcher? Lan Yan exclaimed. Wasn't that thing just made up for Resident Evil? Did she just see the weapon from Resident Evil in real life? It seemed like the exact same rocket launcher. How is this possible? I told you these things could be created. Fang Chi replied calmly, he wondered what Lan Yan's face would look like if he told her that he injected himself with the T-Virus. Fang Chi lifted up his rocket launcher again, aiming at Nalan Ji. Now, you're the only one left. Lan Yan and Nalan Ming Su stared at Fang Chi, both at a loss for words. Chapter 42 Generally speaking, aces can send him flying, so, you're this arrogant because you have a strong spiritual artifact in your hands? Nalanji burst out in rabid laughter as he drew out the long sword by his waist. As his sword shook, the rain around him was crushed into tiny pieces, and the wind then blew the tiny mists into the sky. Do you think an ant can kill the elephant just because it has a spear? Nalanji placed his sword in front of his chest and stood in horse stance one, preparing for battle. The air around them suddenly became stickier than ever and the entire street seemed to be pinned under an invisible mountain. Even the howling wind quieted down. At that moment, the entire street fell silent. All the raindrops seemed to have frozen solid, like pieces of lead and not moving at all. Just then, Nalanjit chopped down with his sword, seemingly slowly but actually with great speed. The air became as solid as steel as the wind and rain wrapped around the sword as it struck at Fang Chi. Crack. A streak of lightning seemed to split open heaven and earth. Before the sword reached Fang Chi, the road in front of him suddenly cracked open. Mountain lifting strike. Lan Yan exclaimed, 
this is an ancestral warrior technique, she felt despair looming over her and blamed herself for being stupid enough to ask Fang Chi to deal with an ancestral warrior. It didn't matter how powerful the rocket launcher was, it could at most only threaten an ancestral warrior. Under normal circumstances, ancestral warriors all knew how to avoid attacks. If the ancestral warriors wanted to, it was extremely difficult for the rocket launcher to hit them. Moreover, there was a limit to the amount of ammo in the rocket launcher. When the players were playing the game, they had four shots. However, the ancestral warrior's chi was endless like the ocean. How could the rocket launcher kill the ancestral warrior with limited ammo? It was simply impossible. It would be hard, even if the rocket launcher provided unlimited ammo. Moreover, even a master warrior couldn't even lift an arm under this much pressure. As this thought crossed her mind, she suddenly opened her eyes wide in surprise. Fang Chi slowly raised his hand and pulled the trigger. The horrific pressure around him didn't affect him, not even a little bit. Fang Chi's body had been strengthened by the T-Virus. Therefore, his strength was enough to compete against a master warrior, let alone other empowerments that were provided by the mutation. Swoosh. After the rocket flew out a few meters, it seemed to have smashed onto an invisible wall and blasted into pieces. The strong explosion immediately broke a hole through the powerful warrior chi around them. Then, he pulled his trigger two more times. Thunderous explosions erupted, and a bright light sprung out in front of them. The powerful and incomparable explosion immediately destroyed a lot of his opponent's sword energy. Then, Fang Chi fired two more shots. The tremendous impact force pushed Nalan Ji back. As soon as he eliminated the aftershock, he heard a sharp breeze blow toward him. Without thinking, he quickly leaned back. A rocket barely missed his chest. Nalan Ji's expression was as icy as it could be. He finally realized that he didn't seem to be a match for this powerful weapon. However, even though its speed was fast enough for a regular man, he could easily dodge them as an ancestral warrior. As soon as he recovered, Fang Chi would be dead. Swoop. Fang Chi fired the sixth shot. He's attacking my feet. Nalanj immediately jumped up, and the rocket blew up under his feet. Giant air waves blasted up along with countless pieces of metals. The immense impact force of the explosion and countless sharp metal fragments made it hard for one to defend themselves. A regular master warrior would have died from it. However, Nalanji waved his sword in the air and concentrated all his warrior chi in front of him, creating a strong and solid invisible barrier. The thick barrier was capable of blocking out everything, from the metal fragments flying at him to the impact force of the explosion. After the air wave blew past either side of the barrier, with Nalanji sustaining zero injuries, Fang Chi fired five shots, but Nalanji was left unscratched. Damn it! Lan Yan was filled with despair. She seemed to have overestimated the power of the rocket launcher. Ancestral warriors didn't even have to run away since they could block rockets as they wished. How could Fang Chi defeat him? Nalan Mingxu watched the battle with an icy expression on her face. Each technique used by the ancestral warriors could reach a godlike level, and even great spiritual artifacts could not defeat them easily. As soon as Fang Chi ran out of ammo, Nalanji would immediately defeat him. This was an unfair battle. He had to create a miracle to win. Rain water landed on the barrel of Fang Chi's rocket launcher before evaporating into white mist. Although Fang Chi seemed to be on the offensive, he couldn't take advantage of the situation. A murderous expression appeared on Nalanji's face as he said, You will soon die. However, he failed to notice that Fang Chi was smiling upon seeing that the impact of the explosion had sent him into midair. Flames suddenly rose in the night skies. Nalanji was sent flying into the air by the impact as if he was being thrown toward the flames. Nalanji's expression changed dramatically. Although ancestral warriors had the ability to fly for a short amount of time, the inertia, along with the fact that he was in the air, stopped him from changing directions. As soon as Nalanji was blown into the air, Fang Chi immediately fired another shot. The timing was perfect. He didn't give Nalanji time to eliminate the impact force of the explosion, meaning that the latter couldn't dodge. Once I block this attack, I will rip you into pieces. Nalanji spat ferociously as he gathered his warrior Chi into his sword once again, holding it in front of his chest. Boom! A giant flame erupted in the sky. But Nalanji's semi-spherical barrier blocked the flames. He stopped the rocket with his bare hands, 
and he blocked the huge force and countless metal fragments with his vigorous warrior chi. However, because of the impact, his body was once again blown into the sky. Swoop. An air piercing noise sounded again. Fang Chi fired another rocket at him. The power of the explosion pushed his body out to where this new rocket was targeting, and Nalanji had no choice but to block it again. In the end, flame after flame lit up the nightly sky, and Nalanji was pushed high into the air by the endless explosions. Fang Chi fired another shot but it didn't hit its target. Fang Chi had no idea where Nalanji had been shot off to. Fang Chi froze for a second. Ah, I missed. Although the T-Virus improved his overall abilities, and Resident Evil helped his practice his shooting skills, this was as far as his capabilities went. Fang Chi turned around, feeling awkward that he had made a mistake. He explained to Nalan Mingxu and Lan Yan, generally speaking, a good shooter would have been able to juggle him in the air. I think I need to practice a little more. Nalan Minxu was speechless while Lan Yan, who felt like she had just survived a disaster, burst out laughing upon seeing Fang Chi's awkward expression. She wiped off her tears and pouted, Mr. Fang, I think you were just trying to show off your skills, but you completely failed. Can you cut me some slack and not expose the truth? Fang Chi replied awkwardly. Nalan Minxu, on the other hand, was buried in her own thoughts, the rockets have the ability to send enemies into the sky, it could do that, chapter 43, playing games is the only way to go, task, sudden attack in the rain, completed, task award, permanent rocket launcher with unlimited ammunition, obtained, no matter how strong an ancestral warrior was, it was hard to fully retreat under the continuous attacks of the rockets, moreover, he had to face the danger of dropping from midair after being completely exhausted from combat. Fang Chi threw the rocket launcher over his shoulder and looked into the distance. I think if I were him, I will never try to bully the two of you again, he said. Lan Yan quickly took out a fragrant elixir and fed it to Nalan Ming Su. Only then did the latter's face regain some color. It was already the next day when the rain stopped and the golden sunshine soaked through the clouds and scattered across the soaked ground, the shadows of last night had officially become of the past. What a great day! Sunshine seeped into Fang Chi's bedroom as he stretched lazily. He could drink Sprite, play games, and use the unlimited rocket launcher if he wanted to. His life excited him. Of course, not everyone was doing as well as Fang Chi. For example, An Cheng, Uyang Cheng, and Bu Che came out from Crimson Jade Pavilion with dark circles under their eyes. As soon as they walked out, people began talking about them. Do you think those young masters have sort of disease? They called over a dozen girls last night but didn't listen to them sing or watch them dance. They just drank and talked all night. They talked about how to obtain fire skills in some kind of skill tree, the possibility of dual elemental sorceresses, and how to choose and arrange gear. What in the world do you think they were talking about? The three of them walked on the streets and looked up at the bright skies in surprise. It's already daytime. Origins should be open by now. Come on, let's go drink some Sprite. And Cheng's eyes lit up. Let's go, we can find out how to gain attribute points today. The three of them immediately shook off their exhaustion and headed toward the internet cafe excitedly. Li Heran left Blue Flame Pavilion with the same exhausted look on his face. What's wrong with Master Li? I don't know. He locked himself up in the artifact making room as soon as he came back yesterday, trying to make all sorts of weird things. There were three weird spiritual artifacts on the spiritual artifacts display stand. Descriptions were even pasted beside them. Some cultivators walked into the shop and glanced over at the new spiritual artifacts on the display stand. Outstanding Frost Rhinoceros Horn. Attack, 421. Durability, 2020. Required level, Spiritual Spring Realm. Plus 30% attack enhancement. Plus 7 ice damage. Cold resistance plus 10%. Huh? The cultivators glanced at each other in confusion. A female disciple who worked at Blue Flame Pavilion smiled awkwardly and tried to introduce the item. This is a new spiritual artifact Master Li Heran created. Ah, uh, damn it, I don't know what else to say. The female disciple felt like crying, working here was so hard. Thanks to the increased number of computers, 
customers realized that they didn't have to line up anymore. Therefore, the mornings at the internet cafe became considerably calmer. Sir, give us each a bottle of Sprite. And Cheng, Uyang Cheng, and Bu Che walked into the shop. Can we drink another bottle today? Yeah. Fang Chi handed them each a bottle of Sprite with no emotions on his face, and the three of them quickly opened the bottles and took a giant swig. Ah and Cheng felt the cool liquid flowing into his stomach, and his entire body felt refreshed. His exhaustion completely disappeared, and he couldn't help but moan in pleasure. This is delicious. This morning, Uyang Cheng felt like a spiritual artifact that had lost its essence. However, after taking a sip of the Sprite, his energy came right back to him. His mind, originally filled with noise and annoyance, felt so refreshed as if it had been washed clean by spring water from the mountains. He was elated by what he felt. Sprite can do this. I feel like I can taste the cool spring water that had been flowing under the snowy mountains for thousands of years. Buche took tiny sips of his Sprite as he enjoyed the flavor. Upon seeing his friends glancing at him, he looked at their bottles and then back at his own. Then, he covered his bottle with his hands and said, What are the two of you looking at? The other two men froze for a second before looking down at their bottles. We finished ours again. Uyang Cheng gave a friendly smile as he stuck out a finger and said, We're all brothers, so let me take a sip. Just a tiny sip. A bottle of Sprite can't be shared. Just then, Fang Chi said casually, Those who violate this rule will never be welcomed back here. Ha ha ha. Bu Che laughed as he went back to sipping his sprite happily. He said, it's not that I don't want you guys to have any. An Cheng and Du Yang Cheng looked at each other dejectedly. We have to wait until tomorrow again. Let's go play. Let's go. It's time to kill the Countess. The three of them felt much better after drinking the sprite. Everyone inside the shop felt happy and content, but after what happened last night, the Nalan family wasn't so peaceful. A skinny elder wearing an embroidered robe sat inside a magnificent hall. The elder, lying against the fur of a ferocious beast, slowly opened his eyes, his mouth opened and closed as if he was talking to himself. He murmured, Do you think you can interfere with the matters of the Nalan family just because I'm old? Master, please don't be mad. A shadow appeared from the darkness and said, we are looking into what happened last night. What's going on with Ji? The black shadow responded. Nalanji kept saying that he was bewitched by powers outside the family and committed suicide to escape punishment. Young master said he didn't know who it was and gave Miss Nalan some medicine. He didn't know who it was. Unconvinced, the elder repeated, So, who was the person that interfered and saved Ming Su? I did some investigation. He is the owner of a small shop in the east of the city the owner of a small shop. Yes however, this shadow had no idea how the owner of a small shop managed to injure Nalanji so severely. Are small shop owners all this powerful nowadays? The elder lifted a hand. Look into the owner's background. How could the owner of a small shop interfere with the power struggle of a noble family? Yes, a noble family. They were like a giant beast in the southeast. When the beast opened its eyes, even the cultivators and prestigious characters had to back off. Yes, they were right, Fang Chi was just the owner of a small shop. Right now, he was casually enjoying his game, having no idea what was happening within the deep waters. In other words, he didn't even want to know. The only reason Fang Chi accidentally destroyed the conspiracy in the Nalan family was because he wanted his customers to play happily and peacefully at his shop. Fang Chi hummed a song as he fought his way to Andriel's hiding place. He felt like he had leveled up a couple times this morning, and he thought, I knew it. Playing games is the only way to go. Chapter 44, Friend have you ever heard of glory? Nalan Ying was embarrassed. As the head of intelligence network of the Nalan family, he looked and looked but had no idea what the Origins Internet Club's background was. All he found out was that the shop owner was an amateur warrior whose parents were civilians. This information confused him more than ever, how could a man like that injure Nalanji so severely? The results of his investigations left him in disbelief. Therefore, he decided to go check out this shop owner. However, when he reached the door of the Internet Cafe, he saw a black shadow sneaking inside. He recognized the black shadow and quickly followed her in. Then, he realized who it was. Isn't that Lan Yan, sir? Lan Yan took out six crystals. Get me two bottles of Sprite. Sprite? 
Nalan Ying was confused. According to my research, Sprite is the specialty drink of this shop, but how good can the drink of a civilian shop be? Could it be some kind of secret code? Each person can only buy one bottle a day. Nalan Ying watched as Fang Chi replied casually. I knew it. Nalan Ying narrowed his eyes. To him, the only reason a small shop like this wouldn't sell a drink for three crystals was because it was a secret code. It seems like there are many secrets in this shop that I don't know about. However, in the next second, he saw Lan Yan sit down, happily sipping the bottle of drink in her hand. Her expression was as content as it could be. Lan Yan enjoyed the aftertaste for a while before taking another tiny sip. Then, she begged, Sir, Miss Nalan is injured, can't you accommodate us and let me bring her a bottle? Fang Chi rolled his eyes at her and said, No, rules are rules. You're so petty. Lan Yan glared at Fang Chi with discontent. Nalan Ying looked at Lan Yan with shock on his face, mostly because her expression didn't look fake. But the problem was, could the drink of a tiny shop really taste that good? Is the owner of the shop really that hard to deal with? Did someone from the Nalan family really just beg the owner of a small shop? Moreover, the owner didn't agree? Are they putting on a show? He felt his intelligence was being put to the test. Oh, right. Just then, Lan Yan asked again. Miss Nalan asked me to ask you something. Yesterday, you said masters could keep Nalanj in the sky. Is there someone else who is more skilled with guns and rockets than you are? Upon hearing this, Nalan Ying froze. He pretended to be resting on a seat but was actually listening intently. Guns and rockets? Masters? He was sure he had obtained extremely important information. Just then, a man wearing black robes sat down beside Nalan Ying. His entire face was covered by the hat of his cloak. It seemed like this man was trying to listen to Fang Chi and Lan Yan's conversation as well. They looked at each other and seemed to recognize each other's identity. However, Fang Chi began talking, so they immediately sat up in their seats and stuck out their ears. Who else is more skilled with guns and rockets than I am? Fang Chi rubbed his chin and said, I'm sure a lot of people are. Are you telling me that they all know how to use those weapons like you do? Lan Yan stared at Fang Chi in disbelief. Is this an easy technique to learn? Does that mean any master warrior could learn this technique? And as long as they had a good gun or rocket, they could defeat ancestral warriors? Nalan Ying and the black clothed man listened intently. There's a special weapon master warriors can use to defeat ancestral warriors? Are you talking about delivery gun? Fang Chi asked, not a lot of people know how to do that. Then, Fang Chi began explaining to Lan Yan what delivery gun was. An hour later. So, the technique he used last night is called delivery gun. Inside a tastefully decorated courtyard was a wall with red bricks and white tiles. If one were to climb over the wall and follow the gravel path into the courtyard, they would see neatly mowed green grass and pear trees that were planted in an orderly fashion. The pear tree was lush and green, it was obvious that the owner had taken great care of it. That voice came from the room facing the north. Nalan Minx's face was still pale. She held a bowl of medicine in her hands and slowly sipped at it. She was injured badly last night and was still in recovery. Therefore, she had no choice but to stay in her room all day listening to Lan Yan talk about the matters of the outside world. The owner said he couldn't completely put the rocket's powers into use either. The true strength of the rocket is that it can send the target anywhere through impact. That's why it's called delivery gun. Who else knows guns and rockets better than Fang Chi? Nalan Minxu took a small sip of her medicine, furrowing her eyebrows at the bitter taste. I thought those weapons only existed in Resident Evil. He said they existed in real life. Lan Yan sat down by Nalan Minxu's bedside and placed her hands on her rosy cheeks. He said that a master named Yixu invented the technique. Master Yixu, a master of guns and rockets? No, the owner said that master is skilled in martial arts and is an expert in all weapons, including daggers, spear, swords, and staffs. He is dubbed the battle god and created a magical weapon called the Myriad Manifestation Umbrella. Lan Yan looked at Nalan Minxu as admiration filled her eyes. How can a person who is so highly attained in guns and rockets exist in this world? Moreover, he is an expert in daggers, spear, swords, and staffs. His title is Battle God. 
Nalan Minxu froze as she repeated what Lan Yan just said. It's obvious that Fang Chi made up the title by himself. How can you believe something like that? No one like that has ever existed in Dajin. You think it's a lie? Lan Yan's eyes rolled around, not completely convinced. But the owner told me a story about that master. Could he have made that up? I'll know if it's fake once I hear the story, Nalan Minxu said faintly as she sipped her medicine. Go ahead. Okay. Lan Yan looked up at the ceiling as she thought back at what Fang Chi told her. Then, she imitated the way he talked. Friend, have you ever heard of glory? At the same time, inside the main hall of the Nalan family dash. Master. Nalan Yin got down onto one knee, his voice was filled with respect. Master, my investigation is finished. The name of the shop is Origins Internet Club, and there are two games in the shop. Resident Evil 1 and Diablo 2. Miss Nalan visits the shop every day to play games. I also found out that the shop owner used a weapon called the rocket launcher to severely injure Nalan Ji last night. It's very special and powerful, and he used a technique called delivery gun, Nalan Ying said in all seriousness. Apparently, a master named Yixu created this technique. It is a skill that can only be employed when using this weapon. Nalan Hongwu suddenly opened his eyes. He felt like his brain had become so rusty that it wasn't working anymore. What in the world? Have I been cooped up and living a secluded life for so long that I'm not aware of anything new that has been happening in the outside world? The owner also revealed some information about that master named Yixu, but I don't know if it's true or not. What information? Nalan Hongwu's expression changed. He had never heard of words like rocket launcher or delivery gun so he found it hard to believe the validity of what he just heard. However, if solid information could back this up. This is what the shop owner said, friend, have you ever heard of glory? Then, Nalan Ying began telling Nalan Hongwu Fang Chi's version of the king's avatar, chapter 45, you have to admit defeat. Fang Chi only told Lan Yan a small section of the king's avatar. He began with chapter 1, the banished battle god and ended with Yixu getting the first kill, obtaining the material to enhance his myriad manifestation umbrella. Of course, Fang Chi somewhat changed the plot of the story. Nalan Minxu's eyes blinked. The plot and setting of the story were extremely real, and she couldn't find any loopholes. It really sounded like a world that existed, but it wasn't the Dajin Empire. Putting its validity aside, the story itself was extremely fascinating. After all, They've never heard of a story that used gaming as its theme. A game like that was extremely new and unique to people like them. Right, right? Yixu is strong, right? Lan Yan exhaled and exclaimed happily upon seeing that Nalan Minxu had accepted the fact that the story was real. The latter gently nodded her head. I really wanted to keep listening, but that awful owner stopped and went back to playing his game. Lan Yan complained. I feel bad for a master like Yixu. He was betrayed by his own party and became a lone soul. I wonder if he went back in the end. Aku. Fang Chi was playing his game when he sneezed. After innocently scanning the room, he muttered to himself, Is someone talking about me? I was in a good mood and told her a portion of the king's avatar. I wonder if that girl took the story seriously. The entire hall fell into silence after they heard Nalan Ying retell the story. The silence was horrifying as if it were the calm before a storm. How much of what you said do you think is real? After a long time, Nalan Hongwu finally asked as he emphasized each word. He was clenching his teeth and suppressing his anger. If Nalan Ying hadn't worked under him for so long, Nalan Hongwu would seriously suspect that this man was trying to humiliate his intelligence. That's what I thought as well. I thought most of the things that the owner said was made up, Nalan Ying began to sweat, he knew how scary the old man was when he was angry. Right now, the old man was on the verge of an anger explosion. He felt like if he said anything else carelessly, he would be thrown into the backyard and fed to the dogs tomorrow. Therefore, he quickly described to Nalan Hongwu how he felt while trying out Diablo 2 at Fang Chi's internet cafe. By the time he finished, Nalan Hongwu couldn't sit still in his seat anymore. He squinted his eyes and sank into deep thought. After a while, he slowly opened his mouth. His voice sounded hoarse, 
like pieces of old tree bark rubbing against each other. Do you think I'm too old and can't catch up with the world anymore? Nalan Ying lowered his head, not sure how to respond to this. After hearing Nalan Ying's description, Nalan Hongwu said, Get me a computer. He sounded excited and was filled with anticipation as he said, I've lived for a long time, but this is something I've never heard of. Go. Let me experience this magical spiritual artifact. Although he had seen all walks of life, he had never heard of a spiritual artifact as special as this. Yes, sir. If it's necessary, you can summon and command the shadow guards. The old man slowly added. Nalan Ying's entire body shook. I won't disappoint you, sir. At this moment, inside a luxurious courtyard with a lotus pond, there was a middle-aged man sitting in an elegant pavilion that was at the end of a row of carved pillars. The middle-aged man was wearing a golden robe, which accentuated his handsome looks. He was twirling a small, delicate glass cup in his hand, and the amber liquid inside swayed as it reflected colorful light. He looked into the cup and said casually, you've really disappointed me this time. Standing at the edge of the pavilion was a man wearing a black robe. He had a short goatee on his chin and was about the same age as the other man. His back was facing the man in the golden robe, and his hands squeezed the railings so hard that the stone railing seemed to have sunk lower into the ground. I've ordered my people to investigate into the owner of the shop who interfered with our business last night. That was just an accident. The man in the golden robe drank all the wine in his cup and said lightly, Brother Nalan, you should know that's not what I want to hear. The only thing I care about is the result. How else can I explain things to my father? Then, he stood up and patted Nalanji on the shoulder before leaving. After he left, Nalanji squeezed the railing so hard that it suddenly shattered into a million pieces. Then, he turned around revealing his icy expression. Nalan Ying came to Fang Chi's internet cafe again, but this time, he was dressed differently. Before, he looked very much like a normal person. However, he now emitted confidence and prestige, his square face making him seem angular and decisive. Behind him was a middle-aged army officer. Lord Ying this officer treated Nalan Ying with respect. What are we doing here? We're buying something, Nalan Ying replied. Buying something? The middle-aged army officer froze as he looked at the alley in front of him. Here, then, he saw the sign above the shop. Origins Internet Club? You know this place? Nalan Ying asked. I don't. The army officer shook his head and smiled. But my people reported that over the last few days, a couple of young masters in the city missed curfew because they were at this shop. I knew those people were all of high statuses. So I didn't look into it. Nalan Ying nodded and walked in. Fang Chi saw Nalan Ying and felt like he had seen this man before. However, he really couldn't remember where. Generally speaking, people with this kind of temperament were eye-catching no matter where they were. It was weird that Fang Chi couldn't remember who he was. Confused. He walked up to Nalan Ying and the officer as he asked, Are the two of you here to play games? Nalan Ying shook his head. We're here for business. Business? Fang Chi repeated unhappily as he pointed at his blackboard. I only do business that is written on the blackboard. There's nothing else to talk about. Say that again, kid. The middle-aged army officer, who was standing next to Nalan Ying, shouted, I can close down your shop tomorrow if I want to. Nalan Ying smiled and said, This is Gong He, deputy commander of the city guards. I'd like to buy a computer from you, it's not a loss for you. So I suggest that you agree. Money's not an issue. Gong he sneered as well. You should be honored that Lord Ying is interested in something here and learn how to tell good from bad. Fang Chi's face fell. Are you threatening me? We're not. Nalan Ying smiled as he pulled on his sleeves. Then, he said with confidence, I am stronger and more powerful than you are at the moment, so you have to admit defeat. Chapter 46 Have you ever seen a Shadow Street dance army? I have to admit defeat. Fang Chi looked at him and said calmly, what if I don't? What if you don't? Gong He sneered as he waved at the door. A team of city guards immediately barged in. Gong He glanced over at Nalan Ying. After seeing the latter nodding, he continued, if you don't agree to sell the thing called the computer, I'm going to close down your shop. Gong He. Just then, a person stood up from the second computer in the first row. His expression was arrogant and icy, and he was wearing a silver hairpin. Who dares to call me by my name directly? 
Gong He turned around and saw An Cheng's icy face. What do you think you're doing? An Cheng asked angrily, young, master in. Gong He was immediately dumbfounded by who he saw, this shop was extremely secluded, and it was in the civilian district. Gong He was ordered by his higher-ups to go buy something with this prestigious mid-aged man. But, why is the young master here? Gong He's brain stopped working for a second. Why are you here? Young master and do I have to report to you? An Cheng shouted, get out, get out. Gong He began to sweat as he pointed at Nalan Ying and then back at An Cheng. One man was his big boss's son, and the other one was from the force that his boss didn't even dare to offend. What was he supposed to do? Deputy Commander Gong, Nalan Ying smiled, since young master and asked you to leave, you should leave. An Cheng, on the other hand, glanced at Nalan Ying and asked in a low voice, who are you? How dare you summon the city guards without permission? The city guards were crucial to the defense of Jua City. Normal people didn't have the authority to move them. Nalan Ying laughed as he removed the leather glove on his right hand. Young Master An, you don't have to know who I am. It seems like this shop isn't as simple as it looks, Nalan Ying murmured. His action of removing his glove seemed like a secret code. The city guards retreated immediately and the doors of Fang Chi's shop suddenly blew wide open. A breeze blew into the internet cafe as the ambience inside became dreary, the temperature suddenly dropped. Black shadows shot into the shop one after another and an icy and murderous sensation spread through the entire internet cafe. All the players exited the games and glanced over, wanting to know what was going on. Then, they saw two rows of guards, each wearing a set of black armor and standing by the door of the shop. These people were all wearing black ghost masks and holding giant crossbows. The first row of guards was squatting while the second row was standing. Their crossbows emitted a dangerous and vigorous aura, and the triangle-tipped arrows were extremely threatening. The guards aimed their crossbows at the shop, and An Cheng suddenly felt an icy chill shoot up his spine all the way to his head. These are and Cheng suddenly remembered reading a record of these giant crossbows and exclaimed, Immortal slaying crossbows. These were super weapons that were used during Darjin's founding war. It was one of the more horrific war weapons that ever existed. Apparently, each string of the crossbow was made of 1,000 year old dragon veins and the tip of the arrows were made of the sharp teeth of powerful demon beasts. The crossbows were designed by Lu Fuzi himself, the top artifact forger of Darjin. Self-protective spiritual artifacts used by cultivators were as weak as paper in front of these weapons. When the founding emperor was fighting the enemies, he was once surrounded by almost 10,000 cultivators. His elite guards used these weapons to launch a surprise attack against their enemies, killing more than half of the high-level cultivators and successfully breaking out of encirclement. That battle became Darjin's most classic example of the weak winning against the powerful. How can so many immortal slaying crossbows appear at the same time? An Cheng's head went blank, although he knew that these crossbows weren't as powerful as they used to be. Being pointed at by them was still horrific. Even Thought and Cheng and some of the others were all cultivators. They were still scared. In the entire southeast region of the empire, not even the Castellans owned weapons like this. There was only one powerful force that was equipped with these crossbows. UUR. By now, An Cheng had figured out which family this man was from. If he remembered correctly, the leader of the elite guards was from the Nalan family. My name is Nalan Ying. Nalan Ying answered casually, and Cheng's body froze as he began to regret kicking Gong He out of the shop. Why in the world would a small shop like this offend a great power like the Nalan family? During the founding war, Nalan Ying was already a level 8 ancestral warrior and was a part of the elite guards. How powerful is he right now? Since he is here, then it is clear who is behind all this. An Cheng thought, even An Cheng's father had to step aside in front of people like Nalan Ying. No wonder Gong he treated this man with such respect and even sucked up to him. Now, can we talk about you selling one of your spiritual artifacts? Nalan Ying sneered. The Nalan family rarely appeared before other famous families, but their fame and power didn't fade away. Not even a little bit. Fang Chi glanced over at An Cheng's expression and turned back around as if nothing was going on. He asked, Can you put away your scrap metal? You're scaring my customers, huh? Nalan Ying froze, and Fang Chi continued in all seriousness, or else, 
I will assume that you're causing trouble. And Cheng, Uyang Cheng, Bush, everyone in the shop was dumbstruck. After all, Nalan Ying wasn't a second or third generation heir of a powerful person like Xiao Yalf. He was a legendary individual who participated in the founding war that happened centuries ago. Did Fang Chi just ask him to put away his scrap metal? Is he crazy? I know that a powerful cultivator is supporting your shop. Nalan Ying nodded. Not everyone can defeat someone like Zafu Wei. But he pointed at the shadow guards and said, do you know what cultivators call the shadow guards of the Nalan family? Cultivator killers. He answered his own question in a low voice. Someone's causing trouble. Fang Chi turned around and pulled out his chair, he was planning to sit back down in front of his computer. Nalan Ying was confused by Fang Chi's words and actions. Many troublemakers have been detected. Lightning tribulation activated. Then, they heard an extremely loud rumble. Crack. A white light flashed before the shop. Then, everyone saw something spectacular. The shadow guard breakdance crew. Nalan Ying's expression was as splendid as it could be. Chapter 47 Fans of the plot and official novel. All the customers inside the shop looked at what just happened, shocked once again. Those who tried to or wanted to cause trouble instinctively retreated half a step. Nalan Ying didn't even know how he left Fang Chi's shop. Nalan Ming Su sat on her soft bed and listened to the newest report Lan Yan brought her. She was a little dumbstruck by what she heard. Did I really try to take the shop for myself? She was relieved that she was someone who made plans before acting upon them. She wasn't in such a hurry to achieve results, or else her ending would have been the same as Xiao Yalf, Xufu Wei, and Nalan Ying. She quietly closed her eyes, and her long eyelashes shook slightly. Tell them to stop investigating the shop, she said. After passing Resident Evil 1, players like Song Kingfing and Xuzixen began testing out the new game, Diablo 2. Those who first started playing all had the same thoughts in their minds. The game was fun, new and good for training. However, once the players slowly evolved from newbies into experienced gamers, they would be attracted by different aspects of the games because their interests and hobbies were different. And Cheng and his friends were obsessed with obtaining additional skill points. Li Heran looked into different items and gear, and young girls like Zixin and Sheng King King liked to dig deep into the plot of Diablo 2 searching for the hope amidst the despair. After reading so many novels that praised the heroes and made their endings happy, the dark theme of Diablo seemed sharper and more interesting. If one were to pay close attention to the plot, they would notice that from the first scene, the player would hear about and even interact with former heroes. However, each and every one of those heroes were met with miserable fates. Their fates were so miserable that the player would wonder if there was really hope left in this world. The two girls, Xuzixin and Shinkinking, recorded important and plot-related dialogue in their little silver notebooks. After reaching their playtime limits, they often sat in the resting area to the right of the playing area and flipped through their notebooks trying to figure out the plots and clues they uncovered in the game. It was as if they were flipping through the treasures they spent so long trying to obtain. Zixin, take a look, this is the story of Blood Raven, who we fought today. Shen King King only began playing Diablo today, so she was interested in the story. Kashia and Dakara said that Blood Raven used to be a heroine who helped in defeating Diablo. Oh. This is the information I got from Song Kingfing on Tristram and Deckard Kane. Oh, I heard rumors about the Dark Wanderer everywhere in the encampment she said with excitement. If we can piece the puzzles together, I'm sure the story's going to be amazing. Xuzixen frowned. Too bad that we don't know much of the plot yet. At most, we can only piece together the beginning. If our progress is the same as the owners, perhaps we can write an entire novel. You're right. Shen King King closed her notebook with a dejected expression on her face. Then, her face lit up. Why don't we ask the owner about the things that happen later on in the game? It's a good idea Xuzixin said, but the dull owner only plays games and makes money, he doesn't care about anything else. I wonder if he'll even help us. Let's go try first. The two of you want to know the plot, so you can piece everything into a complete story? 
After Xu Zixin and Shen Qingqing explained to Fang Qi what they wanted, he looked at them with surprise and laughed in his head and thought, they sure are loyal fans of the plot. Are you writing an official novel? Fang Qi came to a sudden realization. Isn't restoring the entire plot the same as writing an official novel for the game? Official novel? Confused, the two girls looked at Fang Qi and asked, What's an official novel? Is it different from traditional novels? An official novel is one that tells the plot of the game, and it can be released by the creator of the game or done by other authors who gets the copyright. After Fang Chi explained to them what official novels were, their expressions lit up. We can do that? They looked at Fang Chi with surprised expressions. All they wanted to do was restore the plot, so they could read the stories. But thanks to Fang Chi's words, they realized that they could sell the story to the public. Xu Zixin used to only read novels during her spare time, her favorite novel was Celestial Warrior. However, Celestial Warrior and all the other popular novels on the market were similar. They were of similar worlds, similar backgrounds, and similar martial arts techniques. They lacked novelty. All their plots followed the basic trend of a main character growing up to become an indomitable hero. The truth was, after reading the first chapter of Celestial Warrior, Xu Zixin could basically guess its ending. If this novel wasn't somewhat interesting in some aspect, and if there were other entertainment options in this world, she would have given up on the book a long time ago. Diablo 2, however, was a story she had never heard of. From the setting of the world was based on sword and magic, and concepts like angels and demons were completely different from the current mythical system of this world. Moreover, the dark world views of the game kept the players guessing how this world was going to turn out to be, right until the very end. If a story like this could be written into a novel, I will be the first to buy and read it. Xu Zixin couldn't control her excitement and exclaimed with anticipation. As the daughter of an influential family, she didn't need to make money. All she cared about was whether the novel was good or not. She only just began discussing this idea with Fang Qi and Shen Qingqing but she was already excited to read the official novel. Therefore, they looked at Fang Chi with anticipation. Fang Chi believed that writing an official novel was a great opportunity to promote his internet cafe. After all, the system said that the shop owner couldn't go out and get customers since it was beneath him. Creating an official novel would be much better than sitting in front of the computer and playing games all day, even if they only sold the novel in Jewish City. Sir, what do you think about this? Shen Qingqing, a loyal fan of the plot, was incredibly interested. Fang Qi sank into deep thought. Indeed, an official novel was something he hadn't thought of before. If you don't have any plans yet Shen Qingqing asked with anticipation, can you hand this task over to me? You two Fang Qi looked at Xu Zixin and Shen Qingqing with a worried expression. Sure, the girls were beautiful, but writing a novel required skills. Qingqing is a talented girl. Xu Zixin commented unhappily as if she saw right through Fang Chi's worries. Chapter 48, Here Comes the Elderly, Yeah? Fang Chi still hesitated. If the person writing the novel had a deep understanding of the game, the story itself might be more impressionable. Why don't you give it a try? If I approve of your writing skills, then you can go ahead. What are you talking about? Song Qingfeng and the others walked up to them upon seeing the three of them engaged in a heated discussion. Don't worry. Xu Zixin leaned back on her computer chair and closed her eyes in satisfaction. She smiled and said, We're talking about publishing an official novel for Diablo 2. What? A novel for Diablo 2? Song Qingfeng exclaimed, Compared to Resident Evil 1, Diablo 2's storyline was much broader. Moreover, since the game gave the players more freedom to explore, they paid less attention to the plot. However, that didn't mean Diablo 2's plot wasn't interesting, there were just way too many interesting aspects of the game. Therefore, upon hearing that they were going to publish a novel, they were immediately interested. When, Brotheran, Buche and the others were talking about the skills in the game when he turned around and pointed at Fang Chi. The owner said that he's going to publish a novel for Diablo 2. What's the storyline of Diablo 2? And Sheng froze. I only paid attention to the items and skills and completely ignored the plot. Stuff like demons and angels. My focus is on the combat, and I also didn't really listen to what the game was talking about. It's interesting though, the plot is more original than the popular novels we have right now. 
Uyang Cheng chimed in, should we buy one when it comes out? Let's ask the owner when the novel will be published. Buche added, I know that Blood Raven used to be a heroine, and Tristram was destroyed by the demons. I have no idea why everything happened. If that's the case, they glanced at each other and wondered, are we really able to read stuff like that? I kind of want to read it. Before, novels weren't worth reading because they were all just unrealistic fantasies, but for the first time in their lives, they were interested. Inside the grand hall of the Nalan family dash, Nalan Hongwu slowly opened his eyes and asked, did you bring a computer back? I'm useless. Nalan Ying lowered his head. Nalan Hongwu's eyes emitted a dangerous light as he asked and emphasized each word. What happened? I thought I told you to bring the shadow guards. At the mention of this, Nalan Ying couldn't help but think back to the shadow guards break dancing outside the internet cafe. He replied with a long face, he is too strong. I don't even know when he did it. But the shadow guards were annihilated. They were all struck to the ground by a lightning technique. Lightning technique? Nalan Hongwu repeated with a grim expression on his face. The lightning technique of cultivators gathers the lightning from the heavens and earth, but there are usually clear signs of such a strike beforehand. How come the shadow guards weren't able to dodge it? The opponent Nalan Ying said as he clenched his teeth, didn't show any signs of attacking. No signs? Nalan Hongwu stroked his white beard and murmured, so. You're saying that the cultivator used his own spiritual powers to create lightning and took down the shadow guards in the blink of an eye? A cultivator like that is bound to be in the divine ocean realm. He then closed his eyes again and said, A cultivator like that isn't someone you can defeat. It's not your fault. I'm sorry. But why wasn't the news that a divine ocean realm cultivator came to Jiu City? No one in the Jiangnan region had heard about this. Nalan Hongwu asked. Does this person not care about money or fame? Although the Nalan families wasn't as powerful as it used to be, it was still more than enough to deal with a small shop without having to engage in a fight. After all, money and fame were things that everyone wanted, right? Nalan Ying shook his head and said, reasonably speaking, someone who would open a shop would want money, but the owner is extremely rule abiding and never bends them for anybody. Customers who break the rules are never welcomed back. That's why there was no room for negotiations. Oh? Nalan Hongwu was aware that some powerful people had weird tempers. For example, back then, he went through a lot of trouble trying to persuade Le Fuzi to design the immortal slaying crossbow for the Dajin Empire. If the owner of this little shop was really powerful, Nalan Hongwu wouldn't be so surprised by all the rules. Therefore, he asked, are the computers in the small shop really as magical as you say they are? I didn't exaggerate at all. Nalan Ying said, if that's the case, then I'll go check it out for myself and find out who's behind all this. Nalan Hongwu had been living in seclusion for a while, only because he wasn't interested in anything anymore. However, if computers were really that special, he might as well check them out. Of course, if they weren't that special, he was going to make the owner pay for it. Nalan Ying looked up in shock. Family leader, you're going to go yourself? Nalan Hongwu stood up from his seat, he was an old man who had a little hunched back, and his hair and beard were all snowy white. I'll also show those people that I'm not dying just yet. He said as an icy glare flashed through his eyes making goosebumps appear on Nalan Ying's body. Nalan Hongwu opened his mouth and said, Elder Fu, here. Another old man with white hair walked out from behind the hall. He was tall and strong looking, meticulously dressed in a white robe with golden edges. Get the carriage ready. Will do, family leader. Are you really going? Nalan Ying's body shook. After all, the family leader of the Nalan family had been cooped up inside the Nalan family for more than a decade. Is he really going out, just to check out a small shop? While Nalan Ying hesitated, the two elders already walked out of the grand hall. Shen Qingqing was a newbie to the game, so she wasn't as clear on the plot as Fang Qi. Their plan to write an official novel was about to be put into action, and Fang Qi agreed to let her write the small part of Act 1. By the time he finished describing parts of the plot in extreme detail, the sun was slowly setting, and the sky was darkening. The proud sunlight was just about to disappear from the sky when Fang Qi saw four single-horned beasts that looked like horses stop in front of his shop. The beasts were pulling a luxurious cart. These horses were not at all ordinary, 
they emitted a strong aura and prestige. Unicorns? Fang Chi suddenly thought of this mythical creature, but the beasts in front of him were black. Unlike the mythical unicorns, they looked much fiercer. They were demon beasts. Powerful demon beasts that were tamed. The person driving the cart was a big, tall elder wearing a white robe with gold edges. He stopped the cart and then opened the door of the cart. Another thin elder slowly got off, holding a black cane in his hand. Fang Chi couldn't tell what the cane was made of. Is this the shop Ying was talking about? Nalan Hong Wu looked around. Aside from its unique design, nothing else about this shop attracted his attention. Fang Chi, on the other hand, froze upon seeing the elders outside his door. Aren't they a little too old to play games at an internet cafe? Chapter 49 Old Men Who Suffer From Eighth Grader Syndrome I think this is the place. The old men had white hair, but their footsteps were strong and steady, unlike other people of their age. The elder who walked in the front was skinny, but he had thick bone structure and a plump forehead. His solemn expression and meticulous movements gave others a sense of a powerful presence. The aura he emitted was different from officials who were rewarded a lot of treasures after wars. The latter showed off their new nobility with utmost arrogance while this man looked like someone who was born to be a nobleman, prestige ran in his blood. Everything about this old man proved that he wasn't someone of ordinary status. The tall and big elder behind him pushed open the glass doors. Then, that elder bowed down and waited on the side. Nalan Hongwu walked in, and Elder Fu shouted, Who's the owner? Fang Chi pointed at the little blackboard and replied, what would you like to play? Elder Fu looked at Fang Chi up and down, all he saw was an ordinary young man. Therefore, he faintly waved his hand and said, tell the owner to come out here. My master would like to meet him. Fang Chi was at a loss for words. He had never seen people act with such high status. He frowned and said, I'm the owner of the shop, but I don't do meetings with my customers. Upon hearing this, Elder Fu's expression darkened and Fang Chi immediately felt an overbearing pressure approaching him. With a grim expression on his face, Fang Chi said, If you're here to cause trouble, I'll have to deal with you like so. Elder Fu froze, surprised that Fang Chi's expression remained unchanged in front of the pressure he exerted. It was impressive for a young man his age. This shop really is something special. Elder Fu. Just then, Nalan Hong Wu opened his mouth and said, Let's go by the rules and check out the spiritual artifact they call computers, see if they're really that magical. Yes, master kid. Nalan Hongwu pointed at the computer in front of him and asked, Is this a computer? How do I use it? First, decide what you want to play, then I'll tell you how to use it. Fang Chi replied emotionlessly. Then, Diablo. The elder tapped his cane on the small blackboard. It's simple. Just as Fang Chi was about to explain to them how to use the computers, the tall elder grabbed his right hand and smiled. Kid, I'd like to make things clear first. If the spiritual artifact here is really that magical, then fine. But if it isn't, a simple apology isn't going to cut it. Another person who doesn't know anything? As soon as he finished speaking, a voice filled with disdain muttered, Don't be shocked by what you will see. Upon hearing this, Elder Fu's face darkened. The person who said that was an Cheng. He and his friends heard that the owner was publishing an official novel, and they listened to Fang Chi when he told Cheng Qingqing about the plot. Right now, an Cheng and others were discussing it amongst themselves, and that was why they were still there. Nalan Hongwu sneered. They are just spiritual artifacts that create illusions. Why would I be shocked? In the past, he would have slapped a young man like an Cheng out of the room. But today, he didn't. To him and Elder Fu, Diablo 2 was just an illusion created by these spiritual artifacts that were called computers. The surroundings may seem real, but they are all fake. The cultivator who created spiritual artifacts like this is indeed powerful, but it shouldn't be that magical, they thought. Back then, when I barged into the blood smelting faction's wild sand blood sea array and I saw a desert that stretched for miles and a bloody ocean that was endless. If my power was any lower, I wouldn't have made it out alive. Can a small spiritual artifact like this really compare to what I've been through? Nalan Hongwu snickered. Blood smelting faction? Wild sand blood sea array? What are those? An Cheng and the others glanced at each other in confusion. Through Fang Chi's guidance, 
the two old men finally began playing the game. Out of the two warrior classes, the paladin was more prestigious compared with the barbarian, so that was exactly who they picked to be. Upon seeing the animation on the computers, they nodded their heads in satisfaction. It's interesting, but it really is just a spiritual artifact that creates illusions. It may be able to fool normal people, but to us, this is nothing. However, when they entered Diablo world and began playing the game, the two of them looked at the lifelike world in front of them with dry mouths. They felt the howling wind and falling raindrops and saw the clouds in the sky, grass on the ground, and pedestrians on the streets. Is this really just an illusion creating spiritual artifact? As he looked through the memory of the paladin's backstory that suddenly appeared in his head, Nalan Hongwu felt like he had been reborn into another world. Everything felt so real. What was different was that this place possessed everything that a world needed. It wasn't an unstable world within an illusion where only boring elements like sand, oceans, and flames existed. Good day. It's nice to meet you, prestigious paladins. A pedestrian dressed in weird clothing greeted them, shocking them to their cause. It's impossible. Impossible. Nalan Hongwu was stunned as he muttered to himself, how can there be an illusion this realistic? He carefully asked the man in front of him, you are? My name is Warif. As you can see, I am a caravan leader. Nalan Hongwu and Eldafu were completely dumbstruck as they talked with this NPC. Is this really just an illusion? It feels like a real world. It is shocking that a spiritual artifact can take things this far. Neither of them had seen or even heard of anything like this. Their disdain quickly turned into shock. Through talking to Warif, they slowly understood the background of the world they were in. At that moment, they felt like they were young paladins from the west seeking adventure by helping this encampment which was hanging by a thread. Yes, young paladins instead of old men. Fu, when was the last time that we fought side by side? Nalan Hongwu felt his body being injected with youthful energy. Outside the internet cafe, he was a dying old man. But inside the internet cafe, he was a young man in his twenties or thirties with a body made of steel. He waved his weapon in the air stirring up a sharp wind and creating whistling sounds within the encampment. I think a few hundred years ago Eldafu took in deep breaths of fresh air as the weapon in his hand shook with his hands. His strong physique and high spirit made him feel like a man in his twenties or thirties as well, that was when he first stepped his foot into the chaotic world back then. As elders who had been through bloody wars and fought all over the region, they never lost their pride and passion. However, the empire was now peaceful and didn't need heroes anymore, so they had nowhere to place their sentiments and aspirations. Therefore, they had to live the rest of their lives in seclusion and hand the future over to their successors. Nalan Hongwu looked up and howled, my long sword will sweep away all obstacles. Do you have what it takes to bathe in blood with me again? Upon hearing this, Fang Chi's face twitched as he thought. Can the elderly suffer from 8th grader syndrome as well? Note, Junibio is a Japanese colloquial term that translates to middle school second year syndrome or 8th grader syndrome, typically used to describe early teens who have delusions of grandeur, that desperately want to stand out that they have convinced themselves they have hidden knowledge or secret powers. Wikipedia, Chapter 50, If you want to play, come back tomorrow. What was the point of practicing martial arts and cultivating? Warriors could live up to several hundred years, and cultivators could live for thousands of years. If given the choice, who would want to see themselves senile and powerless? At his old age, being able to become a strong young man in his prime was something that even ancient sages failed to achieve, let alone Nalan Hongwu. No wonder he couldn't control his emotions. After almost an hour, those playing in the internet cafe were all youngsters or middle-aged people, no one had ever seen elders here. This made An Cheng and the others curious, so they glanced over in Nalan Hongwu's direction. Elder, you've been playing for so long, but why haven't you used your attribute points? Elder, your skill points aren't used. Didn't you use any skills while playing? What's a skill point? What's an attribute point? Nalan Hongwu was enjoying his battle when he was interrupted, so he replied angrily, Don't bother me, or else I'm going to kick you out. An Cheng and his friend's expressions immediately darkened. We were just trying to remind you that you need to learn skills. Why would you threaten to kick us out? Learn skills. 
Nal and Hongwu who hadn't used any skills throughout the game glared at the young men beside him and said, I've learned so many skills and techniques over the years, what else do I need to learn? Go away. I don't know where you kids came from, but stop bothering us. Elder Fu scolded, leaving in Cheng, Uyang Cheng, and Bu Che completely speechless. After a while, Fu, did you notice that the monsters in here are becoming more and more powerful? Nalan Hongwu's character looked like he was in rough shape. Gulp Gulp Elder Fu who was drinking potions like crazy only had a little bit of health points left. In Nalan Hongwu's screen was a blue carver that emitted lightning. It led a group of carvers, who shouted Rukun issue, as they chased them. Am I going to die here today? Nalan Hongwu shouted, Fu, let's retreat. Our internal essence isn't strong enough. Let's train for 10 years first and come back to teach these monsters a lesson. After playing for a while, Fang Chi was just about to leave to buy some food when he saw the two elders characters sitting inside a hostel. They were sitting cross-legged and were deep in meditation. Huh? Confused, Fang Chi walked up to them and said, Elder, your stamina bar is full. Why are you meditating? Go away. I just encountered a powerful monster called Rukun Issue. Nalan Hongwu was annoyed by Fang Chi's sudden disturbance, so he snorted, I need to cultivate for at least 10 more years to defeat it. Let me meditate for 10 years first. Elder Fu sneered, the monster emits a giant ray of lightning when we tried to kill it, so we have to use our essence to fight it. If that wasn't the case, we would have killed it a long time ago. WTF? Fang Chi was dumbfounded. Are they really going to cultivate 10 years to defeat a Rukun issue? Who told you to do that? Kid, why aren't you speaking anymore? He's probably never encountered a monster as powerful as a Rukun issue. Fang Chi looked at them again and said, Others can kill this monster with their eyes closed. Are you serious about cultivating for 10 years first? The two elders both froze. They also felt like something seemed off. We need to spend a decade to cultivate before playing a game. However, when they were fighting the monster, they calculated and were sure that if this monster existed in real life, they needed to train for at least 10 years before they could defeat it. How could this kid say that other players can kill the monster with their eyes closed? After all, they were almost smashed to death by that monster. Nalan Hongwu's face fell as he turned around icily. Fine. You show us how you can kill this monster with your eyes closed. What if you can't? Fang Chi's face twitched. I'm level 18 already, so I can definitely kill a tiny boss that is level 3 or 4 easily. Want to bet on it? Nalan Hongwu smiled. He hadn't seen a young man as brave as Fang Chi in a while. I was just going to suggest a bet. I won't bully you. If you lose, tell the cultivator behind you to come out and talk to me. You. On the other hand, should go back to minding your own business. Fang Chi's expression darkened. This old man sure talks arrogantly. What if you lose the bet? He asked a little unhappily. Do you really think that I would lose? Nalan Hongwu squinted his eyes. He had seen the powers of the Rukun issue in the game. His powers were restricted. Even if the game didn't restrict people's power, a man as young as Fang Chi wouldn't even be able to run away from the carvers no matter how much warrior chi he possessed. Anything's possible. Fang Chi rolled his eyes and said, If the two of you lose, stop making a fuss in this shop. You have to behave just like the rest of the customers here. Nalan Hongwu froze. He didn't expect this young man to make a request like this. He thought Fang Chi would at least ask him for a reward or noble ranking since the Nalan family was of such high status. Even if this kid doesn't know my status, he could at least ask for a couple thousand crystals. However, to Nalan Hongwu's surprise, the request was so simple. Therefore, he answered without thinking, I accept your challenge. Come take a look for yourself. Fang Chi sat back down in his spot teleporting himself to the stony field. You're a paladin as well? Upon seeing Fang Chi's character, they looked at him in disdain. They were both paladins, so they were well aware of this character's capabilities. They watched as Fang Chi ran straight into the hurdle of monsters. Is he looking to die? They thought Fang Chi was going to die immediately upon seeing what he just did. However, before they could say anything else, what happened next left them dumbstruck. Fang Chi closed his eyes. Then, countless light hammers appeared, spinning around him. One, two, 
3. In a short while, the light hammers transformed into hammer storm that circled Fang Chi. Rukunisu, countless carvers howled in pain. With a loud rumble, the Rukunisu's body exploded. By the time Fang Chi reopened his eyes, countless corpses lied before him, leaving Nalan Hongwu and Deldafu completely speechless. If this is the power of a paladin, what were we playing just now? What are the light hammers? Why haven't I seen anything like that? Nalan Hongwu blushed as he realized that he had just lost to someone significantly younger than he was. The good thing was that his real identity wasn't exposed yet. If others found out that the family leader of the Nalan family lost to a kid, they would definitely roll on the floor laughing. Thinking back at what he just said, Nalan Hongwu's face became redder than ever. He felt extremely embarrassed. He glanced over at Fang Chi who didn't seem to think it was a big deal. This kid is kind. He didn't make fun of me. Nalan Hongwu sighed in relief upon realizing that Fang Chi wasn't going to obsess over what just happened. At the same time, Fang Chi opened his skill tree and pointed at the blessed hammer. It's this skill. Once you get to level 18, click on it, and you'll immediately know how to use it. Then, the two of them listened to Fang Chi and distributed their skills points and attribute points. They even equipped themselves with some blue magic items. You can practice martial arts like that. All I need to do is increase my level and get skill points and attribute points. Who came up with this at that moment? Nalan Hongwu felt like he had jumped from ancient times to a modern world where everything was cutting edge. How could he ever suspect that an advanced spiritual artifact like this couldn't satisfy him? Foo. Let's go kill that monster. I need it to pay for chasing us. Just when they had finally familiarized themselves with the game and was about to go back in and kill the monster, Fang Chi said casually, you've reached the playtime limit for the day. If you want to keep playing. Come back tomorrow. Question mark Nalan Hongwu was speechless. Didn't he just think that this kid was kind? He was so immersed in the game and was just about to go on a killing spree when he was told that his time was up. Nalan Hongwu felt like spitting out blood. Is he kidding me? He really wanted to pull out his sword and strike Fang Chi.